1400x from the bottom like this in the last XRP market cycle would take us around $168 considering the change in the marketplace, circulating supply and behavior of the investors, we can reduce say like 20 to 25 percentage of expected percentage. Mm -hmm. So which will actually take us somewhere around 110 to 118 US dollars. Personally, I would argue based on the success rate of the expected partnerships from the company Ripple and the regulatory clarity, it should be increasing 20 to 25 percentage, mm -hmm. higher than that of the last cycle. But let's be too much of conservative and say it will reduce 20 to 25 percentage from the last cycle. Mm -hmm. So when we actually look at XRP on a weekly chart, mm -hmm, comparing the RSI and the MACD, we are more than rhyming with 2017 if you actually zoom in and just focus just before that bull run look at the candles look at the moving averages look at macd and the rsi so here you can actually understand that so easily now if you actually want to understand that a bit more clear you can actually go into ethereum's chart mm -hmm. so to understand how investors are reacting to the crypto that's the altcoins on the weekly we can actually see this mm -hmm. right so when we are on a weekly we are able to say this only in last two bull market mm -hmm, investor activity range like this has been seen say we can see that the RSI is entering and moving higher the overbought area on a weekly chart with MACD and moving average supporting the same argument chances for a surprise dump will only rise if we can't actually move about this support resistance line say here that is a resistance and here was a support and here was a resistance so that area of around 350 to 375 dollar mark will be something to note for the ethereum mm -hmm. that should be drawing a lot of attention from the sellers but if we are moving through that overhead resistance zone then it's time to rock and roll now what makes xrp more attractive than that because XRP has not pumped like that in this cycle, still now it's only slowly grinding up. But when we actually look at the fundamental side, we can actually see these things like this will actually push the price higher. Because if we move and look at different aspects, there are problems, right? We can agree that and that's agreed upon by even the Fed. Mm -hmm. Fed wants to solve it and they were working on it from last six years if you look at the article that's from 2014 and now we have regulatory clarity for banks so what else you should go on to execute right if you're executing a calculated guess how else you will do that from back in 2014 this is the view of future mm -hmm. the future bank building the bank of tomorrow with ripple now this is becoming an area where you can actually hold gold in US. Now automatically the changes are here. Now just analyzing through these fundamentals, we actually get a push in the price. And when these two are happening on the same time, you should be expecting something even more because these are actually gonna continue for one, one and a half months. And in each well, as Ryan is pointing out, you may actually see partnerships coming out. You may actually see how the infrastructure is changing, how this is actually evolving. So step by step, as we get it one by one from these dates, it should actually push the price up high. Now, usually it's kind of sell the news thing, but as of now, we don't have that news in our hand. And hopefully the investors would be reacting positively with the trend as the entire altcoin markets are actually seeing that push now yes the crypto market is seeing the push along with the btc so look closely with the price and the change in fundamentals that will actually guide you for the future welcome to the scientific investor family where we discuss crypto and science behind investing regularly now i know the intro was a bit long but the si family deserves clarity on the current events and the price action so we couldn't actually make it short now this one I got from Michael and he's actually showing Central Bank of Philippines, mm -hmm, locally called Banco Central NG. Now they are actually coming out and going to own digital currency. Now this is not only one central bank which we are seeing here 
going to do this. We can actually see that same thing all around the world. And why this is something huge? Because we can actually see, like Kevin actually tweeted this out and at the bottom he actually pointed out where he actually got that information. So when we actually move into that file, we can actually see how this thing is actually evolving. If you focus on this, one thing you'll understand, the settlement infrastructure itself is noted as a ripple. Now, all else you can say that it's not XRP. Mm -hmm. It's just the ripple protocol. Now with the recent announcement from Bank of America, you can actually understand when this is rolling out, you may actually see the implementation of digital asset XRP. Here as we can see, it's the example itself is actually showing you in the bank sector, that's Bank of America. And the recent announcement from Bank of America actually shows us like it is entering into a new era where we are moving into mobile wallets and you know these are happening in uh, different regions not only in america but it's actually expanding so once these banks are expanding with the current crisis considering the current crisis we actually know that the capital market is at risk so they actually need more and more liquidity so when they need that kind of liquidity you can actually see once you're actually moving money from one area to another this is just an example of how the correspondent banking network is sucking out money from your pocket my pocket everyone who's executing a cross-border payment because the system is so inefficient they can't do it in another manner or else you'll have to go into a Western Union or some other way also you will have to pay fees but compared to this one it would be far better. But now as the uh, competition from the fintechs is increasing banks need something and this is the tool which bank can use and elaborate on. Now they are working on that one by one we can actually see the announcements coming out mm -hmm. and just now we are actually waiting for these announcement to come up like this tweet came last night showing this is to be expected and now we'll actually get more clarity on what are to be expected now Ryan actually points out like banks are being squeezed by many open infrastructure projects now the COVID accelerating digital needs suddenly tighter budgets now when we say tighter budget in an instant manner we actually need for change and that change may actually look at something of tight capital looking at that tight capital and thinking about freeing that dormant fund will actually enable them to use that fund for their own good now in the second part here he actually shows with this squeeze to keep fintech and big tech from taking further valid share now that is changing the wallet share is actually changing 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 previously we saw majority was actually owned by you know if we are talking about the crypto wallets digital asset wallets we can actually see majority was being handled by exchanges crypto exchanges like coinbase binance we have a lot like uphold and others but now banks are entering into this arena they got the clarity that they can execute these stuff now when it says they can execute these stuff that means they can actually come up with regulations you may own uh, two to three wallets one of uh, that should be ours blah 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 right so good time for deals fintechs that modernize or outsource back-end processes to improve full bank CX so keep this in mind again and again we are saying this at the back end processes of banks it won't only be for banks, it will be for trading institutions as well. Previously, we discussed about DTCC. Mm -hmm. That market was $1.6 quadrillion, which was you know highlighted by the uh, executive from the DTCC. Now, if you look at recent updates, it's like $2 quadrillion just for DTCC backend processing for settlements of trading. Mm -hmm. Now, that's for securities market. Now, if you look at just the payments aspect in the banks, it would also be a huge chunk for this cake right if we actually look at that we will understand as he moves forward in his post he says many past bank projects digitized the front end the back end remained unchanged and now a pain point so it is actually changing now why we are so excited about these changes because based on this well announcement many of this announcements will be coming in next one to one and a half month and we are actually seeing the price is kind of reflecting these or at least investors are, are expecting good news 
Now, if we don't get much of a good news, yes, there is a possibility that what we are expecting is not coming out and the price may actually kind of correct itself. So in our last video, we actually highlighted that if the price is moving to the upside and we are seeing overhead resistance around 0.265, Keep an eye, concentrate or focus on that particular area. If it drops, check whether it's a false kind of uh, indication or it is going down. Because if you compare the RSI here, on a daily, the RSI is around 80, which is kind of, you know, uh, where last time when we reached around 0 0.3, 0 0.35 and even around 0 0.5, we had the RSI somewhere similar. Now, even it is kind of moving to the upside. If the price is just moving to 0 0.26, 0 0.267, RSI will be even higher than that. So in order to give you more a clear perspective, you can actually look on a weekly chart where the RSI is just moving around 60. Now, if it breaks around above 60 and moves towards the overbought area like Ethereum, it kind of signals you we are in a bull market. And when we say that, keep in mind, if you are not buying now or accumulating now, then you are kind of losing the opportunity which we were talking about from months and months. And if your average positions on XRP uh, say less than the current price, that's cool. If you don't want to buy more, it's okay, cool. But if you want to add more and more, try to actually uh, buy more without taking your average much high in price. So price fluctuation is important. Volatility is really important if we are looking at making profits and then we understand just volatility gives us confusion but with the clear fundamentals we can actually focus on what is near happening in the near future right. So with all these changes we can actually understand this is changing correspondent banking networks are reducing and central banks evolving it's like they are moving into a new infrastructure and when we actually go through them, outdated technologies like paper checks and inefficient legacy systems remains pervasive because they work now. And when they say they work, the problem is that they don't work that well and complicate the transition towards a truly digital system. So now this was back in 2014, now it's 2020. So it's six years, automatically we can understand cross-border payments from US was slow or at that time it was really slow, inconvenient and costly. Why? Because you had to face and go through all these kind of stuff. Now they are actually changing it and one by one we can actually see they are coming out and announcing new partnership with new deals. Ah, here I'm talking about XRP, XRP, XRP. Adam just woke up and is saying no, 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 no. It's diaper change, milk, milk, milk. When we talk about banks, and fundamental of Ripple the company and XRP the asset, you can actually forget Deutsche Bank, right? Even though, you know, there are critiques about the bank and the issues going on for the bank, what you have to understand is the leadership has changed from where it was previously and now they have actually went a lot with the fintechs. And when we say that, focus here with our leading edge corporate payment solutions, payment solutions, huh? leading edge expertise in working with fintech and e-commerce companies worldwide when we uh, say that or read that, keep in focus, like we previously went through different documents from the Deutsche Bank, which was collaborating with different uh, digital asset exchanges and other documents where Ripple, the company was highlighted along with XRP, the digital assets. When they say e-commerce platform, we actually saw that uh, Amazon Web uh, was actually in that. So one giant, another giant from two different industries coming and meeting at a point where Ripple Net enables that, right? So as we read further, we read Deutsche Bank is well placed to be cash management bank of choice for this industry as we help to support growing digital economy. So what is Shah focusing on there? Digital economy. And where are we actually heading? A digital world with a digital wallets coming up from, uh, you can see Bank of America is focusing on mobile wallets going digital in different areas like EMEA and uh, Apex Asia Pacific in that area. They are actually going to extend these capabilities. And this is happening at a time when we are seeing this like digital asset investors highlighted like we are kind of entering into a new area of new market cycle for a bull market. It's like green, green, green. So that's cool. This looks like it's from Coin Paprika, which we used previously. 
and many were actually asking about this lawsuit against Ripple, the company. And whenever I see this kind of stuff, what I would like to highlight is go back and check the lawsuits against the companies like Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Google. You can actually understand one thing. Wherever there are something with potential, individuals or companies with potential, and others will understand that this is gonna rise to the top of that particular hierarchy. And majority, some kind of, or some way, in one way or the other, they come out with a lawsuit like this. So if you actually focus on the number of lawsuits, Google faced, Microsoft and Amazon, like these legendary companies in their industry faced, you will understand Ripple is also going to be one among them in the industry which it focuses, which itself is the financial industry and payments industry, right? Now, this is the CNBC news highlights the economic crisis is deepening and it is focusing on the European Central Bank, which kind of wants that Eurozone banks could actually go into much more difficulties if this crisis is deepening and as we can see it's kind of a second wave majority are talking about the second wave it's already coming here it's already here blah 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 stuff or uh, vaccines and other related stuff as the economy is already in a stage where it needs the wind later now the work uh, force of this planet is kind of being laid off from one area to another if you focus on uh, middle east you can understand airlines are dropping like they are just dumping them without parachutes so automatically this is directly affecting majority of the areas See, they are directly cutting the uh, wages some area it's up to 50 percentage some it's 30 percentage so if you used to get say five thousand dollars a month now you only get two thousand five hundred so how will you actually manage all the payments and dues which you have to fulfill in that particular month? month so things are changing mm -hmm. and at the same time we see this one and why this becomes a bit more important at this moment because already we are having an economic crisis and uh, you know a kind of a cold war or a trade war from us and china now it's again escalating and what happens when this escalates you know people kind of uh, move into safe haven assets and gold is already reaching its all-time high uh, silver is an option it's still just 24 dollar so you know it, last time it was around 50 right the all-time high so still there are room to run for uh, silver and we saw like i saw a tweet from uh, robert kiyosaki stating that gold has already reached the all-time high so the uh, return on your investment from this point onwards may not be what you expect and he's loading upon silver now that can be a false signal or a right one it actually depends upon how you conceive it but as far as i'm concerned yeah taking out some of the profits from assets like gold bitcoin uh not not gold uh, not bitcoin from gold and taking it into silver or other assets like digital assets xrp ether and all will be beneficial if you are looking at the market cycle but when you look at the fundamental and technical analysis and combine them together for me it's always xrp for the majority why because the fundamental it offers or it has no other asset can actually compete with this and currently when the second wave is coming in and we are seeing the second wave of cold war between us and china which is like the two huge economies where almost every banks every companies are focusing on is being targeted we can actually understand this is going to go way beyond us a good punch to the enemy will save yourself from hundreds of punches from your enemies that is something you have to keep in mind one side and take in uh, or digest it in another side with investing perspective if you are looking at making profits you should be investing in an asset which hasn't appreciated in price well much in this particular market or this market cycle and that is when we actually come back into this one when we see a asset which has already came down from its all-time high like 97 percentage made it low and moving above the uh, moving averages in a weekly chart moving towards a 200 day moving average is kind of reflecting you towards a market trend change a trend reversal and when the macd is entering into positive territory on a weekly that would give you a signal but that can be or that should be late enough say if you look back here when the macd got into the positive range we already went around thousand two thousand three thousand percentage and by this time we actually reached around eight thousand percentage so those guys entered here got still got good profits it was around thousand percentage but those who hold it from the bottom 
actually took out 140,000 percentage. And from the current point, that's like $168. And if you consider a redu reduced 20 percentage or increased 20 percentage, that's up to you and how you digest the market information and the fundamentals we are seeing. So as we I follow the market, what I understand is chances are it may actually go 20 to 25 percentage more than this or even higher than that. But being conservative, we can actually consider maximum of say around 100 to 120 in which I focus on 118 because that's kind of a number which I get uh, during my calculations. If you do your math, you will actually come up with a different number. Do let me know what kind of a number you are actually getting after considering different factors, parameters uh, from the supply side, investor side, uh, market cycle side and the investment perspectives from the banks. So I hope you guys actually received value from this video and the if you want to support the channel, do hit that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, please. So I'll meet you guys on the next video. Bye for now.